This tutorial is for activity 4b in my touch develop curriculum. Start by logging into touch develop. So go to touchdevelop.com. Log in with your Microsoft account or your Facebook account or your Gmail account. And just wait for your account to sync. And we're going to create a new script. In this tutorial we're going to create a, a vertically scrolling shooter game. Um, the tutorial in the notes also gives you information about how to create a horizontally scrolling one, but we're going to create a vertically scrolling one. So start by using the physics game starter and we're going to call it scrolling shooter. Uh, call it whatever you want. So we've got the default game. If we run that, nothing happens. We've got a game board already created. Um, we're actually going to change that because we're going to go for vertical, so portrait is better for this. So if you delete that one out and create portrait board, and we'll take the default resolution, which is suited for Windows Phone, but it's fine for Windows 8 as well. Uh, we're going to turn the gravity off because it's going to be set in space. And we're going to set the wall. The reason I usually set the walls for this type of game is because we're making a space game. The background will be black, and when it goes to the high score table, which we're going to add in later, um, it's good to have the background kind of black to match the space picture that I'm going to use. And if you're going to set the background to back, remember to set the foreground to white or yellow or something that you can see on black. Okay. And after the gravity, we're going to set some obstacles so that the aliens and your, your ship can't exit the screen. So we're going to create obstacles. Uh, up either side. So we're going to create an obstacle. Now this is the X position, the Y position, and that's fine because that's going to be the top left corner and that's where we're going to start this obstacle. Um, that's the X segment. It's not. We're not going to do it across the way at all. We're just going to have it down the side and I want it to be as invisible as possible so I'm going to leave that X as zero, not even make it one. And um, we're going to make this the board. Just past there, the board height. And I'm going to change the elasticity to 0 0.5 so the ships don't bounce off quite as much. Um, okay, and that basically creates a line up, uh, an obstacle up the left hand side of the game board. We're going to do the same thing now for the other side of the game board. Um, so we need to change the position to the board width, so it starts over the right hand side and then the other bit is the same, so we'll make this the board height, so the line goes all the way down and Y position is 0 as well as you might notice and we'll make that 0 0.5 as well. So that gives us uh, borders basically or up the left and right hand side to stop any sprites getting out. Um, we're going to create two backgrounds, so go to variable, take the board, and we're going to create a picture sprite. And before we do that, really should have loaded in the art, so let's go and do that. Notice that I missed out a step that I had in the notes, which was to create the art to add in the art first. So let's look for space. The final frontier. Sorry for saying that. Right, and we're going to take that background picture there. That one works quite well for this. And it also works if you're doing a horizontal one as well. So we've got that picture that we're going to scroll. And we're going to name that space 
background. So back into here and we're going to select R and select space background. We'll rename that to back one and we're going to promote that to global. So promote it to data. And we're going to do the same thing again. So variable data board create picture art space background and we'll call this one back to and promote it to data. So we've got two backgrounds now. Um, we're going to set the size of these because we're doing up and down we're going to set the height. Um, we need it to fill the screen so that there's no gap when the two of them scroll because we're basically going to have two backgrounds that scroll down the way and when one comes out fully comes out the bottom we're going to flip it around and put it to the top of the other one so we need each one to fill the screen um, so that we don't see a gap between the two so we're going to make that one the board height and same with background to set height and height okay so we've got two backgrounds now both set to the board height and background to we're going to set the Y position of that to basically be on top of the other one. So we're going to take the back one position and take its Y position and subtract from that the back one height which basically puts us exactly one above. You could say back two height there, I suppose that would be correct, but since we, we're using the exactly the same two images at back one height is fine. But if you're using two different ones, that really should be back two. Okay, I'm going to make a, a local variable here for the speed. Um, Probably a bit unnecessary this, but it's the way I've done it in the notes, I'm going to stick to it. Just means you don't have to enter the 100 twice, but you're entering an extra line of code to do that, so that's programming for you. There's more than one way it's going to cut. Right, so set the speed. Uh, we're going to use that scroll speed. As I said, you could just put 100 in there and then do what I'm about to do and put 100 in the second one as well. But we'll set the Y speed to scroll speed. Right, so there we go. We've got both of them set to the same. If you want to change the scroll speed, you just change it there, which is the advantage of using the variable there. So we now have two backgrounds that scroll and one is set on top of the other. If you run that, actually, yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've got the backgrounds scrolling. Now what you've noticed there is that it stops eventually because the two backgrounds go away eventually. We haven't set it to flip round and that's what we need to do next. Okay, we're going to make a method for this. So again, there's a few ways to do this. This method is going to be called from the game loop, so I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to put it into here first and then extract it. So we're going to say if background one, um, it's Y position. If you're doing this horizontally, scroll it be X. Y position minus back one height divided by 2 right, and the reason we're doing the divide by 2 is because the y position is actually the center 
of the sprite, remember? So if that, to, so to actually get to the top of the background one, we need to take away half of the height. Um, and we're doing the board height. Okay, so that tells us if background one has basically left the screen. And when it does, we set background one, we set the Y to background two, Y minus background two height, or background one height. Um, either way is fine. I'm, I'm actually going to do it the other way. I'm going to do back one, because that's, again, if you... Oh, it's, it's six and a half a dozen. We'll stick it back to it. It really works best if the two backgrounds are the same anyway, so I probably wouldn't mess with that. Okay. Uh, let's copy that. And paste it in, because... To save a bit of time. Because it's pretty much the same code for background too. Okay, so the background one is greater than the board height. Flip background one to on top of background two. The background two is out the bottom. Flip background two in the Y position to be on top of background one. And to test this and save us a bit of time, I'm going to put the scroll speed up. Just so that we don't need to wait as long. And you should find now that this goes forever and ever and ever. And let's put that back to 100. Okay, so we now have a scrolling background. Um, to keep the code in here neat, let's extract that. So, if we highlight all of that and we can extract that into check backgrounds and extract. It's a nice way to make the functions or the actions of the code touch develop. Okay, and it automatically gets called, so that will still work. As you can see, if I run it, um, let's add our spaceship in now. Go to art, we'll search for ship, and there's different ones to choose from. It makes life easier if you choose one that's facing up the way. Um, let's search for spaceship. Um, I'm going to take this one. This one is one I uploaded that's from Open Game Art that's free to use. There it is. That'll do. Pick Xenon like if you can remember that game. In fact, very Xenon like. And we're going to call it. What are we going to call it? Spaceship. There we go. Back into main and let's declare this. So add. Remember the order that you add the sprites in is actually the order they're drawn in. So if add, um, if I'd put the ship before backgrounds where I declared them, they would be hidden underneath the background. So it's quite important to put them after it. And we're going to put this into here. So we're going to do variable and board and create picture and art and spaceship. So again, this that the creating the variables is the thing you need to get the hang of in touch develop. I'm just going to call it ship for simplicity, and this will definitely need to be global. So there we go. Ship is set. Um, I'm going to set the width because that sprite's going to be a bit too big. You could obviously resize the graphics to fit your game, which may imp improve performance slightly. So we've set the width, um, and we're going to set the Y position. 
by default they tend to go in the middle anyway so if you just set the Y if you want it to start in the middle it will start in the middle but I'm going to want it to start in the middle bottom so I'm going to set it to the bottom but bring it up a little bit so it's not hard against the bottom so we'll bring it up 100 pixels and we do want friction on this thing so because I've not added friction to the board there is no friction on which is fine for the alien ships but and for the backgrounds but for the ship we're going to use friction and if we run that now we now have a ship there you go pretty nice there right in the game loop we're going to allow you to move this thing so we're going to say variable and this is something we've not used before but it senses so we're going to use accelerometer now if you're not got a mobile device or tablet that you can test this on like a surface or an ipad or iphone or windows phone or an android tablet uh, you can still simulate this using the mouse <coughs> um, i'm going to take acceleration quick there's acceleration smooth and stable which gives you a kind of a value over a slightly longer period of time to make it a smoother value for certain types of games Acceleration quick gives you the most instant feedback, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, it gives you a value on acceleration quick between uh, minus one and one on the x, y, and z axes. The axes we are concerned with is, are the x and y axes. Z is to do with if the phone is upside down or not. Um, so we're going to use x and y, which is tilting it left and right and forward and back. For this game, we are concerned with the x tilt. Um, but we're going to read that and now I'm going to this returns a vector which has got an x y z if you scale it up it's basically this is basically multiplying each of those values between minus one and one and we're going to scale it up by 360 now when you try this out if you find the spaceship is moving too slow or too fast just change that value the scale value there okay I'm going to rename that to tilt we're going to leave this one as local though because we only need it here and what we're simply going to say is ship and we're going to set the speed based on the tilt so set speed on the x-axis because we're going to move it left and right purely not forward and back you could do it forward and back as well though quite easily ship and X. Now that basically just sets the speed on the x axis to the speed in the x axis, the, the, the ship speed x to ship speed x, it doesn't change it. But we're going to add on to the existing speed the tilt and the x component of the tilt. Okay, you could just set it directly to the tilt, but that will give you very instant movement. And if you're doing that, don't make it as much as 360. This basically applies acceleration so that, that when you tilt to the left and then tilt to the right, it won't instantly go into the right. If it's flying full speed to the left, it will start to tilt back the way, which I think is uh, it's more realistic and it's a better effect, I think. So you can use the mouse, as you see here, to to apply the tilt. And because we put the, the boundaries on, you see it can't go out. Right, And so the mouse is basically simulating the tilt. And we can control it now. If you if you run this on your tablet or your phone, you'll be able to actually try that. Okay. Um, next, we want to add some aliens in. One of my students, called Kevin McDowell, has kindly uploaded some pictures for me, or created some art, should I say? Um, so we're going to use his stuff. You can choose any of these ones. This is the one I like the best. Kind of weird eyeball alien. And we're going to call that alien, I think. Yeah, just call it alien, that'll do. I'm just trying to keep the names the same as in the notes. Right. And we're going to create a sprite set for this. So at the bottom here, we're going to say 
variable board and we're going to create a sprite set and then we're going to rename that to enemies you can call it aliens if you wanted it's I've just called it enemies and we promoted it to data I promoted it to global basically <coughs> we're going to create a a new bit of a new action here which we're going to call spawn enemy and this is basically going to create a enemy sprite so we're going to say variable we're going to say board create picture user alien you could pass this in if you want to create different aliens you could pass in what picture you want to use um, I'm going to say sprite I'm going to set the width Setting the width is quite handy if you use a different picture to me so that the kind of size of them are roughly the same. Sprite, we're going to set the position. Now we're going to randomly set position. I've gone past it, haven't I? There we go. Right. Now we're going to set the position. We're going to use the random. So math, random. And we're going to randomize it from the board width. Now again, just the problem with doing that is if you do that, it would work, but you might get some aliens that are half out because the position of the sprites is in the middle. So we're going to take the board width minus the sprite width, which is actually the distance that we want to use. However, we need to then bring it all in half of the sprite width so that we don't get them all off on the left hand side so add them to that the sprite width if you don't understand why I'm doing this have a think about it and you'll probably get it so that's given us a random position basically between s the width of the board but with a wee border at each side to make up for the fact that the sprite position is in the middle the wee border is half of the width of the sprite then what we're going to do in this is we're going to take 300 off which means that they're all going to start at least 300 up you maybe don't need to make it as much as 300 actually and then I'm going to subtract again math actually I don't need to put a zero in there right. we're going to subtract that math random and 2000 which is quite a lot it's just to make sure they kind of come in at random intervals and we're also going to randomize sprite set speed on the y as well and this is going to be random as well now down the way is positive so we're going to give it at least a speed of 200 but we're going to add on to that um, a random component of at least another 200 so that basically the speed is between 200 and 400 and then we're going to add this We're going to add this sprite to the enemy sprite set. Okay, and that's a nice wee action now that will spawn enemies for us. And what we need to do now is call it. So we're going to make another action. We're going to call spawn alien wave. Right. And we are going to pass something into that. So we're going to add an input parameter. And the, what we're going to pass in is numbers to spawn so we're going to pass in how many aliens we want to spawn and then we're going to do a for each e in enemies so for each the way that works if you're not familiar with it is it will loop through the enemies the sprite set and it makes a I'm going to say a copy but it's basically a, a pointer straight to the sprite um, called E. So if you had 10 enemies, the first time round E is the first sprite in the sprite set, second time round E is the second sprite and so on. You can rename that but we're not going to do that now. E will do me. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete the existing sprites. Okay, so that we can use this to spawn them at the end of a wave and when you restart the game. 
So that wee loop there purely just goes through any existing enemies and deletes them from the game board. We're then going to take the enemies and we're going to, just to make 100% sure the sprite set is empty, we're going to clear and remove all references to sprites from it. That, that may be not necessary, but I think it's good practice. We're going to use a for loop now. And we're going to spawn up to the number to spawn. So we're going to loop round if we'd spawn 10, if we pass in 10, this will loop round 10 times. And we're going to call spawn enemy. So that will spawn 10 enemies. Let's try that and see. Right, I tied that but I forgot to call it, so let's call it. I'm going to go ahead and make a method though called reset at this point, or reset game. And then there we're going to create a few variables. I'm going to create um, a numeric variable which I'm going to rename to something that you have in most games, score. And we're going to promote that to data. We're going to create another one and we're going to give it five. Any guesses what this is? Yes, indeed, it's lives. And again, we're going to promote that to data. Um, whoops. Ten. Now, when I say number of aliens, oops, number of aliens, ten. This isn't the total number of alien sprites that we have, but we can reuse the sprites, so it's not like it's 10 total. Um, we can make them respawn if we want. Right, so number of aliens, 10. And that's going to be actually what we're going to have for the first wave, is 10 to kill. And then let's call this method that I created spawn alien. And we're going to pass into that number of aliens. And that will spawn me 10. And I'm going to tell the board to repost so that when we restart the game, it reinitializes the board basically. Okay, and then we're going to go into main, and the last thing we're going to do in main for the now is reset game. Alright, so reset game, at, when main runs, it reset game is called at the end, which initializes those variables to 0, to 5, to 10, calls spawn alien wave, which um, calls the spawn enemy 10 times and spawns 10 aliens. I see now we've got no collisions so we've got 10 aliens coming through. But once they're all passed they're gone. Okay so the next thing that we want to do in the game loop is we want to actually loop round the aliens and make them respawn when they leave the bottom if they haven't been destroyed. So we're going to say for each and we're going to take enemies and we're going to say if E and Y minus E should be familiar with this kind of thing now, height is greater than now you could you probably should say you probably should say divided by two there but it doesn't really hurt for this to just say div minus the height to save us putting divided by two in there and it'll be it'll be a wee bit more than fully out it'll be it'll be out the bottom plus a wee bit which is fine so if it's greater than the height so if the alien has left the bottom uh, what we're going to do rather than just making it reappear at the top we're going to remove it. And we are going to delete it. And you, you could have just changed the position here. But I decided to go the other way and actually respawn it so that it gets a new position. So we're going to, to get it off, we're going to remove it from the sprite she set. We're going to uh, delete it. But right away we're going to spawn it again. Okay. Let's try that. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and if any more come, it's working. Eleven, twelve. There you go. So it's working. We've got constant aliens coming. Right. While we're in here, let's do some uh, checking of overlapping. So if if the alien sprite. Overlaps with what do you reckon the spaceship? Right, what we want to do is destroy the enemy but not respawn it this time. So, enemies and we remove it. And again, we delete it from the game board as well. So we remove it from the sprite set, we delete it from the game board, and we might as well do this now. Lives equals lives minus one. Okay, now we haven't actually drawn lives on the screen, so we're not going to test that, but we are taking lives off. There we go, we can now ram them. So if you want to create a game where you have to collect stuff, you've got the code. You might have a game where things drop and you have to catch them and that kind of thing. You could do that now. And that's me, I think, destroyed them all. Okay. Right, we're going to add in some rockets now to shoot at each other. So uh, let's search online. Add rocket. Right, I'll take that one. Okay, so I've named that and we'll search online. that one. Hmm. Okay, so we've got user rocket and we've got enemy laser. Let's add these in. So we're back into main. And again, it depends where you put this, like what order things happening. So I'm actually going to suggest we put this before the ships and the enemies so that they come from underneath when you fire them. Um, so we're going to say variable board. Variable board, create picture. And we're going to add in the user rocket and rename that to rocket. Make that global. Variable board. Sure. Enemy laser. I've chosen to use a laser there, but uh, in the notes I did call this bearable enemy rocket, so I'm going to stick with that. Even though it's a laser now. Right, and we're going to set the rocket width, and again, it's totally up to you to change these values. 
this is just what I've done and it's set with to 20 and just as a reminder when you set the width on the sprite it also sets the height so it's, it's kind of pointless setting both when you're using a, a picture sprite anyway Alright, so we're going to create the rocket, set the width and hide it. The reason we're hiding it is we're going to use whether it's visible or hidden to determine whether it's been shot or not. So we want them to be not visible to start with. So that we know it's okay to shoot them. And plus we don't want them on screen anyway before we fire them. So we've got these two variables created now. We're going to make an action called an originally imaginatively titled shoot. Right, and we're going to pass quite a few things in at this. Four things. Right, number one, we're going to pass a sprite in to shoot. Number two, we're going to pass in a number. which will be the speed that you want to shoot the thing at. And number three, we're going to pass in the X component of the position of where we want it to shoot from. And number four, the Y component. So we're passing in the position and the speed and the sprite that we want to shoot. And we're going to say if not sprite Is visible. So if the sprite is not visible, if it's not already been shot, basically, sprite, and we want to make it visible first of all. So show the thing. Next, we want to set its position. Um, we're setting it to the x and the y that we've passed in. And we also want to set the speed. So sprite. And it's just on the Y we're setting it, and I went past it there. Set speed Y to the speed, and that's all we need to do. That's a we <coughs> action created that we can call to shoot things. Um, and let's do that. Now, just going back a minute, <coughs> I forgot something from the previous, but let, let's take this whole bit here and yeah, let's take that and extract that and we'll call it check aliens okay so it keeps the game loop a bit neater okay so check the backgrounds we're moving the ship and we're checking the aliens right it stops it getting too big Right, let's go in here now and we'll see if the board is touched. You could add a button, which I've done in, uh, and I'm going to do in other games, but I'm just going to say here, that we, we've got tilt controls for moving and the only other control we need is to shoot, so I'm just going to say anywhere you touch on the screen will shoot. So we're going to call the shoot method, we're going to pass in, uh, not the enemy rocket, but your rocket, we're going to... Uh, set the speed to minus 450 which is up the way going up the way going quite fast basically I'm going to pass in the ship x value and the ship's y value so that the rocket basically shoots from the ship so as soon as you touch the board you should be able to shoot There we go. Right. So I was able to shoot once, but I'm not at present able to reuse it. Um, we also basically need to do that. So let's just say if 
the rocket y position plus the rocket's height and I'm hopefully not going to have to explain why I'm doing that less than zero so if it goes at the top all we're going to say is rocket hide now you might say you don't need to hide it when it's at the top I'm using that basically as a way to check if it's able to be fired again okay so we can shoot and we can shoot again and so on Um, let's go into check aliens and we're going to add a bit right so we're going to go to here so what we're saying in this remember is if it uh, leaves the screen and respawn it if it overlaps the ship and then we're going to do another on the final else of that so if it hasn't left the board if it hasn't hit the ship we're going to say if E overlaps with the rocket and if it does what we're going to do is hide the rocket and enemies remove just like we've done before I actually think probably a good idea would be to make a method now that I'm doing this again for removing the aliens there eh? because we're doing this quite a few times make an action should I say not a method C sharp coming into my thinking there right and we're going to say score equals score plus five so we're going to if the alien hits a rocket remove the rocket Sorry, hide the rocket, remove the enemy, delete the enemy alien, and add five points. Okay, now we did something wrong there. Right, what we forgot to say was, and, and it does tell you in the notes, but I forgot to say, and rocket. is visible right so we we, sh we need to make sure the rocket is visible right. there we go and we now have a wee shooting game right before we go much further I think it's probably a good time to get the score on the screen so let's go back into board and create a variable and it's a board and we're going to create text create text uh, I'm going to set the text width to just fill the width of the screen and we're going to keep the rest as it is and we will rename that to scoreboard and we'll go make it global and we're going to set the position of this scoreboard note to touch develop developers why don't you put the most popular commands right away anyway board width divided by 2 and we'll bring it down slightly from the top right so we're putting the scoreboard along the top into game loop and what I'm going to say at the top is scoreboard set text 
to score. Make sure you put a space after the word score because that's you just writing the word score. We could concatenate with that the actual variable that holds score. And then we can concatenate again another bit of text which is going to say lives, put space, lives, space. And then concatenate with that the actual lives variable. And run that and now look, there we go. Points. And we're even losing lives as well. Very close to a game, isn't it? We're getting there. Back into check aliens because what we want to do now is get them to shoot at you. I'm going to say if, and this is probably the most complicated if statement I'm going to do in the game. We're going to say if x minus the width, half of the width. of your sh alien is less than so basically if the left hand side of your alien is less than to the left of the ship's position the sh central position of the ship right and the x position plus e width divided by two. So if the right hand side of it is greater than the ship's x position. So if the left hand side is to the left of the ship's central position and if the right hand side of the alien, so the left hand side of the alien is to the left of the center of the ship and the right hand side of the alien is to the right of the center of the ship, meaning it's above you and The y position is greater than zero, basically meaning it's on the screen and not shooting from outside the screen. And then what we're going to do is shoot, so shoot, not e. Funny if we left that in, it would shoot itself. We're going to shoot the enemy rocket at a speed of 500. It's a bit unfair, I'm making it faster than your rocket. Um, e x and e y we're going to pass in the aliens position and let's try that bit of code and there we go it's shooting now i only did it once because again we need to tell it when it gets out to respawn it uh, and we're going to add in here make sure you go to the left here. We don't need this inside this massive else if thing that we've created. We're just going to say if the enemy rocket on the Y minus the enemy rockets height and again, you should be getting that by now, is greater than the board height. And so what does that do? It checks to see if it's out the bottom. And if it is, we hide it so it can be respawned. So we try that now. And as you can see, they're respawning. We're also going to see though, else if uh, enemy rocket is visible and the enemy rocket overlaps with what are you doing? The ship. And if it does enemy rocket hide because we're going to hide the enemy rocket so it can be shot again and lives equals lives minus one so 
hopefully we can be shot now basically Okay, and you can add this code into the game loop or into check aliens. I'm actually think it suits the game loop better, so I'm gonna go in here and say if enemies count, which tells me how many um sprites are in the sprite set. So when there's no sprites in the sprite set, you've destroyed them all. And we're gonna use a wee prompt, so we're gonna say wall prompt. And what we're going to say in the prompt is whatever you want. I'm going to say new wave about to begin. And you could maybe put a subtitle. No. Right, so we're going to tell them that they've basically cleared the first wave. And then you could say new level there or well done, whatever you want to do. We're going to say number of aliens equals the number of aliens plus five. So we're creating more aliens for the second wave to make it more difficult and make them more to destroy. And then we're going to spawn alien wave with the number of aliens. So when you clear the first wave, now I've not added in the code to, s to mean that we can, so that we can die yet. So this will be quite an easy task for me because I can ram them. If I could control it, there we go. It's much easier to do this using a tablet or phone. New wave about to begin. And there we've got more aliens coming at you. You can increase the speed of them as well if you wanted. Okay. Quite an important thing is to have a way to end this game. So what we're going to do is create a action called end game in the end game we're going to say we're going to tell you that the game has ended so let's prompt them say game over and we're going to say number of aliens equals number of aliens I am reading the wrong bit of code. So we're going to prompt it for game over. We're going to clear the wall. Okay, we're going to wipe it clean. We're going to use bizarre for high scores. Post leaderboard score. And it will be score to the leaderboard. And we're also going to display this leaderboard, so post leaderboard to wall. And we're going to pause it for a wee second by using the time sleep command. So we're going to pause it for, say, f five seconds. It's a bit long, but you can change that if you want. So when the game ends, it's going to say game over. It's going to clear the wall and it's going to post a score up and then wait for five seconds. But then what we're going to say is if, and we're going to use the wall prompt again, but there's some different types of prompt. We're going to sorry, ask Boolean this time. Right, which allows us to ask a question basically. So we're going to say play again. You can put a subtitle on that as well if you want in there but I'm not going to. So we're just asking them do they want to play again and that basically gives us a true or false. So we're saying if they want to play again then Reset the game, and the game will start again. And otherwise, we'll just stop the game, stop the time. So game over, basically. Now, f by doing that, I'll actually stop on the leaderboard so they can have a look at that. And one final thing that we haven't done, which is obviously quite important, is somewhere in here, you need to say if lives equals zero. Right. If you want to be 100% sure, it may be safer just to say less than or equal to zero. But that's probably overkill. But it's better safe than sorry. And then we're going to say in game. Right. And that is pretty much game over. Okay.
Okay, game over, pretty much game done. Right, game over. We hit OK. It shows the score, and if you had published it, it would show your name and everything. And after five seconds, it said, Do you want to play again? We say yes. And we can play again now. I probably should have hidden that laser sprite so you don't get a shot right away. That's a, a thing I'll let you do. Okay, and we can basically play again. Um, the very last thing I'm going to show you in this, how we're doing for time, 55 minutes. I'm going to try and get this game completed within an hour. So let's do this fast. I'm going to go into art. We're going to search for explosion. Um, this is an online artist that's provided me with this, these explosions, and he's given permission to use them. I need to credit them. Um, so we're going to take one of these explosions, take that one for instance, which if you look at it, it's got one, two, three, four, five by four in a sprite set. This is animation, so it's a nice animated sprite. And we're calling it explosion. I'll just call it. This. There we go. Right. Okay. In order to use that animation, we need to add in a library. We're going to add in this sprite sheet one because I've used it recently. It's up there, but you should be able to search for it. Add that library in, and then go up to main. And near the end, in fact, just at the end, we'll do it. We're going to use that. So we we'll use libraries, use the sprite set, and we're going to initialize the sprite set for our game board. We're going to add another sprite set sheet. Sorry, we're going to initialize the actual animation now. So we're going to set the sheet, and let's call it explosion. And we need to tell it the picture that we're going to use, which is going to be the sprite sheet that we just loaded in which we called explosion animation and we need to tell the computer how many rows and columns it's very important you get this right or the animation will be wonky go into game loop and we need to make sure that for any animation we're doing we're updating it so we're going to use the sprite set and we're going to evolve it just like we do evolving for the game board to make sure it gets updated okay and then we're going to go to check aliens and at the point where we're allocating score, which means we've shot an alien. If I can, I'm going to add underneath. We're going to say variable. We're going to use this right sheet. And we're going to create a full animation. Um, Use an explosion, which we just created. And this is the duration. We're going to play the animation for one second. And and when you say one second, it plays the whole animation once. So if you want it to play through the animation quicker, reduce that. If you want it to take longer, make it longer. Um, and we're going to play it once just. Okay. We also need to position the sprite on the screen. So we're going to set the position and we're going to set it to the position of the rocket so that it's basically in the position where the rocket hit the alien which makes sense and that basically should be it there we go just make sure it happens if I do it again there we go and that's us Okay, so we've added animations now, and that is the end of our activity 4B. Um, there's some challenges to complete for that, the adding in extra explosions. Um, you can use the same idea as I've done there and just put it into the different bits here where different collisions occur. Also add some sound effects. And then once you've done all that, publish your script if you want, maybe change the graphics, make it your own, maybe change the speeds, do things like that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on making a scrolling shooter. The end.